All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today's Monday, March 21st, 2022. So a quiet pause day, all things considered here in the market. SP down uh, three tenths of a percent. Triple Q's down a little bit more at eight tenths. Dow down three quarters. Um, so, you know, not really a whole lot going on. Just kind of a quiet day altogether. Now, we did get Powell this morning. Um, he, he came out and said uh, in his speech, that his tools uh, stand at the ready to be used at any time. Um, and the market took a little dump here. Um, wouldn't really make too much out of it. When you have light volume like this, and we have probably the lightest volume we've had in quite a while today, um, about 70 million shares here traded at about 3.30 p.m. here. So the lightest day we've, lightest trading day we've had for a while. It's just really hard for the market to move lower significantly with light volume. So you got a little algo dump and that brought us back to that 441 area. Tagged that little uh, 100 moving average there in today. And now kind of just kind of riding up a little bit here. Um, there was a lot of people getting a little excited about the, the sell-off here, but you know there just wasn't a lot of volume um, going on. And, and to be honest, he didn't really say anything today, today that he didn't say verbatim last week. So he, he really said it last week in his speech, like we, you know, we're ready to move on inflation should we need to. And that's kind of just what he echoed again today. So it's not like he said anything new really. And ultimately, really all this is doing is the market right now is just backing and filling. You can see we had a you know huge thrust up here and now it's starting to print a bit of a doji candle here. Um, so to me, this says that we're probably headed up to that low 450 area. So in the in the low to mid 450s, I think, is where we're headed in the near term. But again, market got really extended here in a short period of time. Had a nice breakout there. And it would not surprise me to see some backhand filling. I think we said this last week, you know, we're probably going to need to go sideways if we need to, uh, if we're going to be able to make another leg up here. But overall, I don't really see any problems here um, on any of the time frames that I look at on the market. Event. Uh, uh, again, weekly, that was a really powerful reversal there. So I would assume that we have at least another uh, leg up in, in us. And then we'll see where we go from there. But again, you know, we'll reassess things once we get up to that 450 handle and a little bit higher. Um, now, is it possible we pull back and retest 430? I, yeah, it's it's possible. I don't think the market wants to really do that just yet. Um, I know a lot of bears are getting excited um, because we're into that 200 moving average, but this to me does not look like a really strong. It, it isn't a really strong reaction. If we if we saw um, if we saw a 200 moving average test and we close down at the lows, then I would say okay, we're probably going down to 430 to test that pretty soon. But right now, it doesn't look like the market's even interested in doing that. Um, it's kind of just hanging in there. And yeah, it really just looks like backing and filling to me. I would not make too much more out of it. Anyways, let's flip over. Let's uh, cover a few sectors here. So let's go over to the Russell really quick. So Russell testing uh, Friday's lows, coming back off the highs here um, and really hitting this um, this area here where you broke through on Friday. You know, could it pull back a little more and maybe test 200? It's certainly possible you broke through that. Uh, last week, you got the 20 moving average, the 50 moving average down there. So again, a little bit of a pullback wouldn't surprise me. See the same thing here on the diamond, just kind of hugging that 50 moving average. You broke through, you know, sort of these pivots right here. So maybe a 340 back test is in order or something like that. You got the 20 moving average starting to curl up and then maybe the diamond can go attack that 100 moving average or maybe this red bar open right here at 355. It's possible. Uh, but again, I really kind of seeing the same thing across the board. Nothing really wrong. Uh, with any of the patterns here same thing on the triple q's stalling out at the 50 and no reaction right it's not it's not it's not like we sold off and we're sharply coming lower um it, it's not a it's not an m shape you know we're, we're just kind of stalling so we're just seeing a little bit of stalling here at the 50 ma um inside of tech there was a lot of strength though look at tesla here um gapping higher and holding the gains i mean it's off the highs but still up two percent uh gapped above the 50 moving average and now it's holding that uh, you did have a lot of resistance in this area. So again, it probably needs to, to go sideways, but I have this, you know, possibly getting up to 1050, um, just based on the numbers I ran on it. Now it's not going to go there in a straight line. Um, but I think you're going to have a lot of resistance at a thousand with that hundred moving average there. But, you know, I don't really see any problems here in the market. Um, Apple also up nicely, got rid right of into that 50, 100 moving average necktie. So again, a pullback, some type of a flag pattern is probably in order, but really no problems out here right now. Amazon, this thing is actually a really good pullback candidate for tomorrow for a quick uh, short play. I'm not going to take it, but 
you know, you know, cause I don't really have, again, like the volume is very light. So it's, it's hard to really get much on the sell side when you have light volume, but this is a nice area here. Pivot trend line, 100 moving average. Um, you're extended short term. You got a doji. Usually you get a pullback when you get something like that. But, but, you know, Amazon holding up well, and a lot of these stocks are holding up well. Uh, Nvidia is also kind of a pullback candidate here tomorrow going into this area, double top 100 MA doji candle and little extended short term. Uh, speaking of the semiconductors, AMD, little on the weaker side really kind of you know it got off the lows like everything else did last week but not a very good thrust here um getting up to the 50 but you know you can see this is clearly underperforming so uh maybe that's the market's way of telling us something maybe uh somebody knows something about amd that we don't um but that's definitely an interesting uh, little development there we'll continue to watch that you do kind of have a down sloping trend line here you know somewhere in that range it looks like you're getting above that now but um, just kind of a weak move there for AMD, all things considered. So we'll keep that on the radar. As far as the SMH is, um, same deal, right into the 50, got the 200 above that, but into all these pivots here. So again, not surprising to see it stall out. Maybe wants to come back and test that 250 air, or uh, excuse me, 260 area uh, before making kind of an ABC up. But again, no real problems. Same thing on the IGV, um, little thrust off the lows, broke out of the trend line, 50 MA, and now a stalling kind of hammer candle. Um, so again, no real problems. Shifting gears, Dow Transport stalling out as well, but this is starting to flag up here, right? So last week I told you this was going to go to 17,000, and it's probably going to flag up a little bit before it does that. Um, you had a massive thrust last week, so not surprising to see it run out of gas a little bit. Probably needs to refuel and um, you know before it can make a push there. But I, I don't really see any problems with the transports right now uh, whatsoever. That 17,000 handle is still in play. Um, XLF also pausing. Again, we talked about these moving averages in here. Uh, Bank of America, that stalled out at the 200. Uh, Wells Fargo not looking terrible here. This is starting to consolidate a little bit. And uh, JPM also kind of hanging in there as well getting above that 20 and still you know it's holding above the 20 so you know it, it's hanging in there okay look at the i mean there's like no volume in this right now so you know when you get light volume you want to give the market the upside bias it's telling you we're probably consolidating to make a push higher broker dealers also pulling back off that 200 but again no real problems it's not like it had a sharp um you know nasty re rejection uh by any means all right over to energy now so xle getting a bounce we talked about last week had a nice pullback, but it never broke trend. Um, these things, these names are getting really overbought. They're still overbought, even with that pullback. But again, nothing wrong with the pattern, and you got to respect it right now. Now, if we get a lower high, that's what I would be kind of you know interested in, in uh, watching here. If we can't take out this high, uh, especially on a closing basis, um, you know, then it could then we could talk about maybe a move down to seventy. And if you get through that, you know, then you're down to you know the sixty-five area. But again, these names are overbought, but. Um, in XLP having a nice bounce. Same thing with OIH. These names are overbought, but we got to respect them right now. They're in uptrends. And, um, you know, when things are trending up, they can go higher. So um, just be aware of that. As far as crude is concerned, we actually just took 27% uh, on UCO. So that's 2X long crude oil. And last week we took 17.4% on SCO. So we double dipped here, played both sides last week. We shorted crude into the top here at 125. And uh, we got a nice rollover. Uh, we took profits down here and we flipped long here at about 95 and uh, got a nice 27% uh, off of that. So uh, double dipping here on crude. I think this still has a chance to get up to 115, uh, at least 112. Um, and then you're going to come into a lot of resistance. So you got this big red bar here that's distribution. So, you know, it, it was probably going to happen. We we're going to get a bounce off of that. You had this uh, $100 area, 95. Look at this little chop, 50 MA. Not surprising to get a bounce there. We also had quad witching OPEX last week. So things getting pushed down that were overbought. The trade was crowded. And now that, that those options have expired and the open interest has gone back down, now it can get a bid again. But again, um, that 120 area is going to be a lot of resistance. And, you know, 112, 115 is going to be a tough zone as well. And again, watch for the lower high. If we get a lower high, um, it could spell problems for energy. But right now, uh, it's hanging in there and you got to respect it. Nat gas. So starting to watch this little triangular pattern here. And it's getting really tight, right? So... There's not a whole lot of room here for this to wiggle. So this is probably, I think this is a, this is looking, I mean, it's a symmetrical triangle, but it looks bullish to me. Um, it looks like we do a little bit more backing filling. This can make a run at 550. So keep that on your radar. Um, you know, maybe it could end up being a swing long here. I just need to see a little bit more, but um, nothing wrong with that pattern, really. Um, I like that you, you had kind of a fake breakdown here and then you regain trend. 
Um, this looks like it's pushing and coiling higher to me. So keep NatGas on your radar there. Flipping over to the dollar index, not a whole lot going on. Getting a bounce off that 20 moving average like we talked about. It got into resistance. Now we need to look at the weekly. So because the daily is kind of, it, it's, it's, you know, we got overbought and it's kind of choppy here. We need to look at the weekly now. If you close above this red bar high, that would be a huge positive. Um, but at this point, it's, you know, it got extended from that weekly 20 moving average. It's really extended from the weekly 50. Um, and it's into a lot of resistance. So I don't think it can advance right now. But, you know, again, with geopolitical issues, there's always that exception that could uh, possibly come up. Um, gold, so a bit of a negative right now. Because you had this move down and now you're kind of going sideways. So you don't really want to see that. You don't want to see it stay inside of this candle. You want to see it close above that high and kind of negate this bearish pattern here. Um, same thing with silver. So kind of looking like a slight inside bar here on, on silver and gold. Now it's early, right? It's only been a couple of days, so it could easily move higher or move out of that. And another positive for it is that GDX had a nice bounce and GDX having a decent day up to uh, two and a half percent here. So kind of getting out of this range and more of a robust move. Same thing with the SIL, um, SILJ, um, 2.3%. So a, a nice move. This actually looks okay. Um, nice move up. And you didn't even really get that extended, but pulled back to the 20 and 200. If, if this can go sideways a little bit more, this can actually advance. So um, I like what the miners are showing us, and you always want to look for the, the miners to be a leading indicator. Um, and right now they're holding up okay. So maybe gold and silver, you know, if they can, you know, like I said, with gold especially, if you can get above this red bar high and close above that, then that would kind of negate this pattern. Also, we're going to have to go back in a few days here. And we're going to check back on this monthly red bar high. Remember, we were following that last month. So if we close above that um, by the end of the month, which would be next Thursday, I believe. Yes, next Thursday is the 31st. That would be a negation of that inside bar, which would be a huge, huge, huge positive. So obviously that will be on radar for us as well. Uh, platinum, not a whole lot to speak of, just kind of getting a bounce here. Palladium, same kind of deal. Um, it's just a little too early off those lows to really do anything with it. Uh, copper also kind of just having a pause day. Um, just a little inside bar, nothing really too um, eventful going on there. All right, so let's flip over to our coins here. So this is Ether. So we talked about this um, wedge pattern last week. Nice breakout and then um, just kind of consolidating above that. So again, nothing really wrong here. I don't see any problems with this. And again, it is, if this holds up and starts to push higher, again, that's we've been using this as a leading indicator for quite some time here. And it's been it's worked out really well. It's kept us uh, on the right side of the trade in the markets because the coins have been leading the markets lately. So um, as long as they continue to do that, we'll continue to use them. Same thing with Bitcoin. Um, still not above this wedge, you know, still inside of this wedge pattern. But, you know, it's holding up today. Ether is green. Bitcoin's flat. But no real problems out here. You know, I don't see any issues. Um, you know, we're still holding this green bar. So, you know, we'll give the upside bias. It could get up to maybe 48,000 here and back test this trend line if it does play out to the upside again. But, you know, as I keep reminding everyone, just be aware of that weekly because we do have that inside bar there on the weekly as well. So um, bit of a, a split, but in the near term, I think it's OK um, and it is safe. All right. Outside of that, market's closing in about 15 minutes here. Um, spiders just kind of hanging in there. Looks like we're going to get a bit of a kind of daily doji-ish kind of candle spinning top, uh, something of that nature. Vol is kind of, you know, take a look at the VIX here today. Getting a bounce off that 23 handle, 100 MA. We'll see what it does here. I don't expect much, honestly. Um, I don't think Vol is ready to really push higher again just yet. I think we have a little bit lower to go. And obviously that would be that would bode well for the, the market. Um, and then again, we'll just kind of reevaluate things as we make that next leg up, which I expect to happen. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here short and sweet today. Again, not a huge, uh, huge move by any stretch of the uh, imagination, but Powell kind of spooking the markets a little bit, um, but really nothing really coming out of it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Take care. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.